when you think of animals, what comes to your mind? An earthworm, a fish, a spider, a frog, a starfish, a rat, a cat, a crow, or the king of the jungle, a lion? Well, we've got so many animals on the planet, and it's really hard to keep track of all of these. And it's very easy to categorize them into different types so that we can study them better and keep track of them better. So let's get into the classification of animals. So we can classify animals on the basis of the number of cells they have, or whether they have a vertebra or not, where they live, and whether they lay eggs or not. Let's get into the first criteria. Let's categorize animals on the basis of cells. We've got unicellular animals. These animals are made up only of one cell. These are usually very small and can be seen only through a microscope. On the other hand, we have multicellular organisms. These are made up of many cells. And usually you don't need a microscope to see these animals. What are the examples? An example of a unicellular animal is amoeba. This is a really small jelly-like animal and it can be seen only through the microscope. Similarly, we've got paramecium. This is also really tiny and can be seen only through the microscope. What are some examples of multicellular animals? I'm sure you know a lot of these. Cats, ants, rats, and there are lots of examples like these. The next basis of classification is vertebrae. Let's try to understand what that means. Here's a skeleton. Can you see this chain of bones that runs along the back? Yes, it's called the backbone or the vertebral column. There are a lot of new terms. Let's try to demystify. Vertebra is a single bone. Like you can see all these single bones right here, right? Each one of them is called a vertebra. The plural of that is vertebrae. Okay, and we've got the other term that's vertebral column. That's the entire string of bones. That's the entire backbone is called the vertebral column. Let's look at the two categories of animals that we get under this classification. We've got vertebrates. These are the animals that have a backbone. And we have invertebrates. These are the animals that do not have a backbone. Let's look at some examples of vertebrates. The best example of vertebrates is human beings. Run your hand across your back and you'll notice that along the center of your back, you have a chain of bones. And that is your backbone. That is your vertebral column. Other examples are birds. The birds have a backbone running through their back. Snakes also have a backbone. It may seem weird at first because snakes are very flexible, but actually they have a string of bones all throughout their body. Fish are also vertebrae. Fish also have a set of bones something like this and they classify as vertebrates. Next we've got examples of invertebrates. The best examples of invertebrates are insects. Spiders, they don't have a backbone. Mosquitoes don't have backbones. Neither do earthworms have backbones. Let's go ahead to the next category, habitat. We can classify animals on the basis of where they live. We've got terrestrial animals. These are animals that live on land. We've got aquatic animals. These are animals that live in water. We've got amphibians. Amphibians live both on land and water. And then we've got aerial animals. These are birds that fly in the air. Let's go ahead and look at some examples. For terrestrial animals, we have like a lion, monkeys. You've got a lot of examples. Humans are terrestrial animals, dogs, cats, rabbits. Most of the animals you see around in your daily life, apart from birds, are terrestrial animals. Let's go ahead to the next category, aquatic animals. What are some examples? Obviously fish, starfish, jellyfish. Anything that lives in water is an aquatic animal. Next are amphibians. What are some examples? Frogs. These can breathe through their skin. These can exchange gases through their skin. So this literally takes in oxygen through tiny pores on the skin. Uh, so do salamanders. These two can breathe through their skin. Now, frogs and salamanders can breathe both on land and underwater. That's not the case with animals like crocodiles. Crocodiles usually uh, stick their little snout above the water. So if this is the water, they have those jaws above the water so that they can breathe. Examples of aerial animals are basically birds. Here's an eagle, a pigeon, crows, sparrows, miners, whatever birds you can think of. Birds have feathers and wings. Next, we're going to classify animals on the basis of whether they lay eggs or not. Oviparous animals lay eggs outside their own body. On the other hand, viviparous animals usually give birth 
to their young ones. So what are some examples you would have guessed? Yes, almost all birds like the hen right there, uh, the hens laying eggs. We've got other examples like fish, even frogs lay eggs. Examples for viviparous, humans, dogs. Can you see that litter? They didn't come out of eggs, right? They were puppies that were given birth to by the mother. Now, if we go back to all those animals we saw in the beginning, take a moment to pause and classify all these animals into the categories we just learned about. 